Welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about DNA replication. The information on this presentation covers learning target number three, which states, or which is, that I can describe the process of DNA replication. DNA replication, you see there's a diagram here to the right. This is a picture of DNA. You should recognize this as sort of the normal picture of DNA that we've been looking at so far as we've been talking about the structure of DNA and what a gene is and what a chromosome is. You'll notice down here that we have two strands of DNA that <clears throat> are in the midst of being replicated. So we're taking one strand and making two. It's important to understand DNA replication for many of the upcoming units because DNA replication allows our body to make new copies of DNA for cellular reproduction um, in order for growth and development because every cell must get a complete set of DNA and this is the process that that occurs in order for that to happen. Why do we need to replicate DNA? Well, as I stated, every cell in your body contains a complete copy of the DNA. So if we look at these two cells here, these two cells have recently divided. They started out as one cell, they divided into two. In order to have two cells, the DNA must be copied before that cell can divide to make new cells so that each cell can have a complete set of the DNA. The base pairing rule that you've been learning about when we've been talking about the structure of DNA is pretty important in understanding replication too. One of the most amazing characteristics of the molecule of DNA is its ability to um, not only contain information, but also to provide a, a code that allows it to be accurately copied uh, using itself. So, so it's not just the code for, of information for building uh, parts of your cells that ultimately become your traits. It's also the, it also provides a template or a, a model on which a new copy of the DNA can be built. And here's how the base pairing rule factors into that. Each base on one strand of DNA can pair with only one other type of base. You guys should know that. A can only bond with T, a T can only bond with an A, and a G can bo only bond with a C, and so on. So because that is true, each strand, so if DNA, if you think of it as being a double strand, it's a double helix, each strand by itself has all the information to reconstruct the other half. You don't actually need both halves in order to reconstruct it. So we see the process of DNA replication where the DNA separates and then nucleotides are added one at a time until we have a new strand, actually we'll end up with two new strands, although this picture only shows one, strand of DNA that has half of the parent strand, is right here, and the daughter strand also represents one half. The daughter strand is the red strand here. The blue is the parent strand, okay? And we noticed here that we started with two blue strands. Now you're going to need to understand DNA replication as a series of steps. So if we think of DNA, if we start off with DNA as a molecule, uh, the first thing that happens to the DNA before it can be replicated is it has to be flattened. So DNA normally occurs in this double helix shape, right? The first thing that happens is that double helix shape gets unwound and the bases get flattened out. So the bases used to occur in here like this. And now they get flattened out. Okay? And so we see that here. The thing that separates and flattens the DNA and uncoils it is an enzyme called helicase. If you remember, uh, enzymes are one kind of protein. Okay? And this is a an enzyme protein involved in the separation. So the DNA strand gets unzipped or uncoiled and flattened out in order to separate the strands by an enzyme called helicase. And I've drawn it, drawn it here. So this is the helicase. 
enzyme. I've drawn it sort of like a, a V-shaped structure, kind of like a wedge pushing the DNA open. And, and in real life, actually, the protein does sort of look wedge-shaped, wedge although it, it's not really a green triangle. Uh, just as a side note, DNA replication does occur in many places simultaneously. So if we think of this as one long strand of DNA, there would be helicases at many different points called replication forks. And those replication forks just expand and grow until the DNA has copied itself. And that just having it happen at multiple points at, at one time allows the DNA to replicate much faster. So step one was to separate the DNA using a helicase enzyme. While the, once that has occurred, um, a new enzyme called DNA polymerase comes in and bonds to the uh, DNA. And the process of replication using nucleotides and the base pairing rule begins. Um, the DNA polymerase moves along the strand, as so. And as it moves along, it pairs up nucleotides. So for instance, we have a C right here. Okay. So we know that C always pairs with G. So here comes a G. And notice it's a nucleotide. It's a sugar, a phosphate, and a base together. Polymerase will continue moving on. And we have another C. And it will connect another nucleotide. We have a G, so we need to add another C. And we have a G, so we need to add another C. I got a little repetitive here when I was making my DNA. And you'll see as we do that, a strand begins to form. Here we have a T, so that's going to take an A, and so on and so forth. Simultaneously, on the other side, the DNA polymerase is moving along. And um, you know a C will bond with a G, although because it's DNA replication occurs um, in a process that's called anti-parallel, it happens in reverse. You guys will remember that when you built your model. You know how one side was right side up and one side was upside down. My right side here doesn't look quite as nice and neat as my left side, but I hope you get the point. Um, and notice that we now have two strands of DNA that are beginning to form. And you know this process just simply continues on. And we see two, form, two strands forming from one. Step three. In step three, we have two strands of DNA. Okay. In this case, the black strand here represents the original parent DNA from the diagram before. So here we have our black strand. Now the black strand represents the parent DNA. So there's one here and one here, Okay, on this side and one on this side. The blue strand then is our daughter DNA. And there's one on each side, just like they were forming up in the slide before. We had our two blue daughter strands on the inside. And here they are again. Two pieces of DNA have been created. Because each DNA strand contains one old and one new strand, this process is called semi-conservative. Semi means half. Conservative means to conserve or to keep right, the same or to protect. In this case, we have conserved half of the original strand. That's the parent strand, the black strands. But we've only conserved half of it, making it semi-conservative. When you get assessed on this learning target, these are the things that we're going to be looking for to earn a four on this learning target, so that um, you can accurately prepare yourself. These are what you're going to need to be able to do. You're going to need to be able to correctly apply the base pairing rule. I believe most of you should already feel comfortable with that after what we've learned about the structure of DNA. You'll need to know the names and roles of both enzymes. So the helicase and the DNA polymerase, you need to know that both of them are enzymes. That helicase unzips the DNA. The DNA polymerase um, applies the base pairing rule by adding nucleotides. You need to sh be able to show me a model that's semi-conservative. And you need to accurately display that half of the strand came from the parent and half of the strand is new. And you need to have the accurate sequence of events in a, in a three-step process, if you, if you do it the way that I did. 
um, or however many steps you feel like you need to accurately show that. It, it doesn't really matter whether you do it in three or whether you do it in 20, but you do need to show the sequence of events that leads to a semi-conservative replication of the DNA molecule.